uh, this, this evening uh, because we, we do know that the word of God says how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity, in unity, in unity. And so we, we bless the name of the Lord and we bless the Lord. And so we're going to open, we're going to open in a, in a word of prayer. Then I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to come back and uh, talk about some housekeeping items and talk about all that is in store for us for this evening. I, I, I truly believe that, that, that God has a blessing with every one of our name on it. <laughs> God has a blessing with every one of our name on it. And it's not God's desire this evening that anyone would feel excluded or, 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 or missed out. You know, oftentimes when we think about the blessings of God and think about God blessing, it's almost like standing in line and waiting on your turn, standing in line and waiting on your harvest, standing in line and waiting on your breakthrough. But I believe with all of my heart that there's a there's an anointing over our gathering this evening where God has come, God has come to bring forth blessings on everyone that has tuned in. And I trust you are already touching and agreeing with me and believing that it will be manifest during this time, during this hour, during this moment of our, of our gatherings here uh, this evening. Have a dear, have a dear uh, uh, brother uh, that I have uh, gone to uh, become acquainted with uh, in, uh, in recent, recent months, uh, go by the name of TJ all the way from, uh, from, from central Florida. I'm going to have him open us up. I'm going to have him open us up in a word of prayer. TJ, if you're on the line, would you go right ahead and lead us to God's throne and pray God's supernatural blessings on this gathering this evening? Go right ahead, please. All right. All righty. Um, I'm in trouble with my laptop. I can't share my video, but I can go ahead and pray. Let all God's children bow their head. Father, praise you for this event and your purpose for it. We know that when we gather together, you always have a divine agenda. We love you for that, Father, that even we have done that what you asked for. The results are so much greater than we could ever imagine. Even if we failed attempts in this event, you blow us away with your faithfulness to provide what we need throughout this event today. Our prayer today is that your will will be done through this event. Take what we have prepared and multiply our efforts as only you can. Steer our intentions to align with your righteousness will. Remind us of your faithful provision when our efforts fail us for, to fall short. May all glory go up to you when we reach the finish line and climb over benchmarks. Blanket us with your peace today, Father. Keep us physically safe and guard our hearts and minds from pride and selfishness. Keep love at the forefront of our minds today and guide and light for all we set out to accomplish and celebrate, Father God. So, Lord, let us see you through through this event, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. And every child of God said amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. We bless the name of the Lord. Real, real quickly, want to just uh, highlight some house, housekeeping items. We got an action pack uh, program for you. We got an opportunity to uh, give gifts away and, and to and to bless to bless you and and certainly there are going to be others that's going to get some additional additional blessings but that's what this that's that's what it is in fact we're in the season we're in the season people of God of blessings Jesus was the greatest blessing greatest blessing if there is one thing you should do during this time of the year give to someone even look to giving to someone who's unable to give to you, who's unable to give to you. Find someone somewhere and give, give to them, give to them. Uh, there's a few things that I want to want to highlight real quickly here. Again, only one of us can talk at a time. So it's important right now. We're going to have each one of you, everybody mute their mics. If everybody mute their mics, this thing will go down much better when, when other mics are open, it causes feedback. So if we can all uh, uh, mute our mics, we'll all mute our, mute our mics. And when it's your turn to say something, you go, you go right ahead and, uh, and release your mute. But, but we need, it, it's very important that everyone uh, keep their mics muted so we don't get spilled over. We don't get spilled over 
uh, and it kind of masses up uh, the program. Also, this this uh, a program has been video uh, uh, been video been recorded, and it'll be made available to any of you that wish to have a copy of it. You just just need to text me, and we'll shoot it out to you immediately after uh, after this after this re recording. Also. Um, we are, uh, my, my wife and I, we are giving a special gift to the first 50, first 50 individuals. All you need to do, all you need to do just so we can get it mailed out to you, I want you to have it before, before Christmas is just our gift uh, to each one of you, each one of you. We, we, we committed to giving a blessing 50 individuals, the first 50 individuals. I. I know we're getting that the numbers are, 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 are increasing, but the first 50 visitors, but what I need you to do for me, please, I'm gonna give you my number. All you need to do is just give me your complete mailing address. Don't exclude the zip code, the, your complete mailing address. I want, I'm gonna give you this number and just text your complete, your name and your complete address to me. If you can do that, here's the number. Is 305 335 9174. Again, it is 305 335 9174. That's all you need to do. Just 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 send that uh that address to me. So when I, we go to uh send these out uh in the next day or so, uh, we'll have the complete information. Need you to do it but at, at whatever time, if you're able to do it, even during this broadcast. Some brothers have already, I see my phone jumping, God bless you. Some brothers already have uh, started, started doing so, but if you're unable to do it right now, just write it down again, one more time, 305-335-9174. That's all you need to do and we're gonna, want to get it out to you. This is just from my wife and I. We just want to be a blessing, just want to be a blessing to the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit laid it on me. And so I, I am I am doing it. Amen. And also before we uh before we get going here, uh we have been we have been blessed with a sponsor that have stepped forward and have said that they want to bless someone with a flat screen television, a flat screen, that's right brothers, a flat screen television. In addition to that, uh, uh, several gift cards. So throughout our, uh, our time together that we'll have breaks in between the various speakers and we'll, we will do a, we'll do a drawing, we'll do a drawing. We have a special device that we hope to see if we can launch and, uh, and uh, allow this device is like a wheel that spins and it falls on. So we'll be pulling the names directly from the list of uh, participants. We'll be pulling the, the name directly from the list of participants. We're right around 30 uh, participants that are that are on at this time. So we'll be pulling the, we'll be pulling the names from that list and we'll do uh, we'll spin the wheel and it falls on you. I want to announce who the sponsor is, a very, very dear uh, uh, friend of mine, uh, uh, Pastor Gregory Williams, and, and we'll have an opportunity doing our program just to hear from him and the company that he represents. But they, they step forward and say, hey, we want, to, we want to give back. We want to be a blessing to the body of Christ. And they're making this television and these gift cards available, uh, available to you. So I think that I think that's pretty much uh, that pretty much covers uh, everything. And then we have brother brother James. He'll be uh, doing a doing a song for us in a, in a few minutes. And and we certainly appreciated uh, his op the opportunity that he uh, blessed us with during our last meeting uh, to uh, to bless us in a song. And so with, without without further without further ado. Uh, we are going to have Brother James to uh, prepare himself, uh, Minister James to prepare himself uh, to, to sing to us. Also, we want to encourage you that if, if, if you'd like to uh, reach out to some other brothers that have not connected yet to quickly, quickly join in with us, uh, please do so at, please do so at this time. We, we certainly want to hit the, uh, want to hit that 50 mark 
and, and, and blow that over because we want to be a blessing this evening. And we want this program to be a blessing this evening to as many men that the Lord would allow us to assemble during this hour. Brother, Brother James, if you're there, would you go ahead and bless us and bless us in song? Go right ahead, please. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. <clears throat> Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. We adore you. We adore you. Hallelujah. We adore you. We adore you. We adore you. Hallelujah. We need you. Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you in this season. Lord, please help us. Lord, please help us. Lord, please help us. Lord, Please help us extend your mighty hand, Lord. Lord, extend your mighty hand. Lord, extend your mighty hand. Hallelujah, 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 Lord, we bless your name. The name of Jesus, the one and only name, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. We thank the Amen. we thank the good Lord. Thank the good Lord. Yes. Yes. Just wanna, yes. wanna continue to remind you to uh keep your keep your uh your device or your, your computer on mute as we make our way through the program. So without further ado, we'd we'll like to introduce to you our first our first speaker. Our first speaker is a very, very dear brother of mine. Uh, some folks think we are biological brothers, but I think we're about as close to being biological brothers as it can possibly be. We bear the same 
bear the, bear the same last name, but have different mothers and different daddies. But, uh, but when it comes down to our spiritual father, we got the same spiritual father. Again, very dear brother, Amen. friend of mine, uh, uh, Minister Daryl Baker. Uh, brother Baker, go right ahead, please. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody, this evening. I uh, thank God for each one of you brothers that are on the, this uh, Zoom meeting this evening. What a wonderful time to, to share uh, in the word of the Lord. Uh, the first thing I would like to share with you deals with spiritual guided relationships, men and women, a husband and wives. I'll be coming from a couple of books of scriptures and reading a few uh, verses from each. Uh, first one would be coming from Genesis chapter three. Uh, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. And verse six reads, The woman was convinced and it was good. The fruit looked delicious and she wanted wisdom it would give to her. So she took some of the fruit and then ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. Verse 16, then God said to the woman, I will sharpen the pains of your pregnancy, and in the pains you will give birth, and you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. And to the man, he says, since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground will be cursed because of you and all of your life you will struggle and scratch for a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat of its grain. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat food until you return to the ground from which you were made. Going to Ephesians chapter five, Again, reading at uh, verse 21, and the word of God says, and fathers submit one to another of reverence for Christ. For wise, this means that you submit to your husband as to the Lord. For the husband, it leads, he is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so your wives should submit to your husband in everything. For husband, this means loves your wife just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. I'd like to go back to Genesis in the beginning. We've all heard of the story of the beginning, first book of the Bible in the creation. But part of that creation story, when Adam and Eve had fallen, somehow or another, some things got lost down the road in translation because we had fallen away and many were not in line with God's and God's word for a long time. Let's look at the first part, going back to verse 16, when he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pains of your pregnancy, and in pain you will give birth. The second portion of this says, you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. So we kind of forget about that. And actually people talk about most of the time, a woman in childbirth. We men don't experience that pain of labor, that pain of bearing a a child in birth, but women do. And we often hear in those that have wives or have had children, the women says, oh, the pain was so tremendous. But after the birth, somehow they forget about that, that pain. But they do remember back in their minds that while bearing a child, there was a lot of pain in birthing a child. But this second part 
of the verse says, you will desire to control your husband. So it's given them a desire to control over the husband. And that does happen and continue to happen, even with women that are not in the church. So we kind of don't expect that, but it happens to even women within the church. Now let's jump ahead a little bit, going back to the second point of this in Ephesians, where it says for husband, this means love your wives, just as Christ loved the church. The word says he gave up his life for her, for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. Now it's in the, us twofold. I look at that twofold. It says Christ gave up his life for her, her referring to the church, which means us as men, we need to be submissive to our wives in love. And love in the word of God will help us overcome some of these things. And it's because of sin and the sin nature that causes this conflict at times between men and women. One want to take control, and then women want to take control and rule things and sense a uh, rule over their husband. However, men at times are not loving their wives. Some of them want to dominate and control their wife and want them to be submissive to them because they feel just because they are man and they should be at the head. But that's not wrong. That's not right. In God's word. He didn't mean for that. Love, love, God is love. And he's saying to love them as Christ loved the church, as Christ loved the people in love. So God says that we should love God with all our heart, mind, and soul. And the second of the greatest commandment is to love our neighbors as ourselves. So our wives also are our first neighbors. If you're married, that's your first neighbor to love her, and he wants us to love as he loved, even though he has the agape love, unconditional love, it makes it hard sometimes, sometimes it's hard for us men because of the conditions of love. And we sometimes forget how we should interact with love and sometimes when sin pops up, it causes us to change things. Now that's love in bringing men and women together. So my second topic I like to cover this evening, the second thing I like to talk about, us men and our boys are not, not to exclude girls or women. Oftentimes I say the word female to characterize them as one. However, my wife, she does not like that at times when I say females. Um, I, I won't go on to explain why. But here we are today wondering why there are less men in the church. Think about it. Where does it begin? I don't know about you, but I think none of us were born in the church. We had to go and attend church, but none of us was born into the church. We are born into God's family, and then we are given a choice later on in life. However, some parents did not take their sons and daughters to church as kids. But not, you know, some did, but not all parents did so. Well, my wife and I enjoy watching Wheel of Fortune. I'm sure you've heard about that. Uh, but what amazes me that most black people on the shore are women, the same as it is in the church. Most of you see more women than our men. Uh, and the host usually asks a little personal information about each of the contestants, uh, the host being Pat Sajak. Most of the black women have children and no husband. And they, some of them have a boyfriend. Again, I say, where are the men? Where are the men? Statistics shows that about 50 years ago, black marriages 
made up about 65% of the adult population. But now, 65% of the adult population are not married. My, my, my. Nowadays, it's more common for Black people to cohabitate than to get married. Some chose to live together for financial reasons or having kids, while others do not want to be committed to marriage and our families. Today, more women are attending church without men or boys. We also see grandmothers bringing their grandchildren to church uh, here and there. Although it is not uncommon to see our men and women mainly taking their sons mostly to football, basketball practice, and even the early Pop Warner leagues that we hear about, hoping that they will be professional athletes. And remember, most of them will not go to the pros, but they will get, but they can get a good education and show them and teach them that there are other options of life in living. Now, we all know that, and we've seen it, you know, uh, they're, they're willing to take their kids to those practice sessions, uh, even starting from very young age. You get out there and you see little boys out there at uh, six years of age, uh, trying to play the sports and they even have the little girls out there uh, becoming cheerleaders at an early age. So that's happening. Now I see where are the boys being driven? Not to church. Don't get it wrong, some girls are falling away as well. But most there, most of it, there's a wide road that scripture talks about that's earthly. But the narrow road is heavenly. We need to rethink and reteach our families to focus on the key that ends at the narrow road. And how do we do this? We as godly men can try and do more talking to our families about the role that we have tested in our lives or been tested so far. So I'm gonna focus on four little things, four little points in closing. First, let us start talking to our wives, our girlfriends, our sons, our daughters, brothers and sisters, other relatives and our friends. We need to be transparent about our struggles and our victories that are in our lives. Let them see us praying and praising God openly for them and with them. We need to let our young ones see us praying. Let them know that we are praying and praising God. And that's important to be transparent being transparent to let them see the struggles within our lives uh, and what we are doing, uh, giving and let them see what victories God has given us and showed us blessings through. So we also can let them also pray. There's a prayer line during the week that Pastor Baker has at the Way Fellowship Church. And there's one of the prayer warriors that comes on and there have been some mornings she's had her grandson. Uh, he's about five years old. Uh, uh, Pastor Baker knows it. And sometimes he tries to pray. Praise God for little Alexander. Now, the third thing I'm saying, most of our churches have senior saints. And you may have uh, some senior citizens in your families. Take your children and your family members to visit them and pray for them and with them, especially your children, little children. Now, when this pandemic is over, take them to visit the sick and pray for them over them. You find some of the sick that may be in their homes, some sick individuals, and I've said after the pandemic, some sick people are in hospitals, and some of you have visited 
hospitals and homes where people are sick. So take your children at this young age and family members so they can begin develop this habit about serving within the kingdom. So when the pandemic is over, please do that. And also you'll be setting an example and encouraging uh, these young ones in the process and other family members. Finally, uh, take them around to show them the lives of some people who have chosen and fallen traveling that destructive wide road. We got them in our communities. We have some in our families all around. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll also show them about the benefits of some who have been traveling along that narrow road. You might want to visit, even visit the cemetery and show them that there are young and old people there and that's the end of the road. And the end of the road for those who choose to travel that wide and broad road. We need to reach down to our young ones and lift them up for their future in their life. Time is winding up. The end is near. Amen and amen, my brothers. Thank you for listening. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Minister uh, Daryl. Thank you so much uh, for sharing with us. We're gonna move. We're gonna move right along uh, to our our next uh, speaker, Daryl. Thank you for those words of those words of in, in encouragement. How we really, really need to uh, grab a hold and take uh, responsibility uh, for our families uh, and raising up our children. Uh, and uh, setting an, an example and uh, and uh, teaching them how to how how to pray and and move forward. Again, without further ado, we we want to introduce to you our our next speaker, uh, Minister uh, Daryl uh, Stelden Sheldon, I should say. Uh, and uh, it, it was a blessing uh, fellowshipping with him with him a few weeks ago, and uh, we believe God has a brief uh, word of, of exaltation and encouragement to you as uh, he's already done through Minister uh, uh, Daryl Baker. Uh, Minister uh, Daryl Shelton, would you go right ahead, please? Good evening, brothers. How's everybody doing this evening? Doing well, my brother. Great, great, great. Um, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad for the in invites um, and I'm glad that I'm going behind uh, Brother Daryl Baker there. And I don't believe in coincidences. I don't believe God set up coincidences. <laughs> I think he has everything planned out the way he's, he wants it to happen. And, um, and I, I'm saying that not that we coincidentally have the same last, I mean, same first name, whereas uh, Pastor Baker, you share the last name with him. We, me and him have the same first name. Praise but God. I, um, Praise I'm going to be brief. I'm going to be really brief because um, you know, when I told my pastor um, that I was going to be doing this, uh, Pastor Willie Felton of Living Word Christian Center International in Miami, he, uh, he told me to always be sensitive to the spirit. He says that to me many times before I get ready to speak. He tells me to make sure, because I know you prepare what you're going to say, but be sensitive to the spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, I, told, I always tell him, yes, but I always go with the script that I have written. I do have about two or three pages written here that I was going to go with, but when we were waiting in the waiting room for you to come on, uh, Pastor Baker, uh, the spirit hit me and said, you know, I want you to go a different direction. Mm -hmm. And it's not coincidence that God had Brother Daryl Baker say what he said, because mine is, is right in line with that. Mm -hmm. um, in Proverbs 27 and 17, and we all know it. Uh, we all know it very well about iron shopping and iron and a man shopping another man. Um, at our at our church on uh, Monday through Friday, twelve at twelve noon, we have a, a seven minute prayer prior for for just for the men. And prior to the prayer, um, there's about ten minutes of uh, exaltation, um, just uh, you know leading us up into the prayer. So Minister Joey, who was a minister who's over this particular ministry. He um, just, it was just on last, late last week, he was, I was listening in and 
Minister Joey has a, a two-year-old son. And during the middle of the exaltation, Minister Joey, you could hear him trying to control his son. To, you know, you can hear that they're outside. You can hear the birds chirping. And so he tells them, uh, hold on, hold on. Daddy's trying to do something. But the little, little boy says, no, I got to pee. So he says, okay, hold on. We, we men, we're going we gonna, we gonna to do this right here. I'm going to show you how a man does it. So, you know, they, they go to take care of their business. Like we know how to take care of business as little boys. So when we don't have the uh, proper facilities, we do what we got to do, right? And I was so motivated and inspired by that, that he, here it is. He, first off, we got the men, which is inspiring to me already, that the men are stepping up, uh, getting together during this time of pandemic when we can't come together. We found, found innovative ways to be able to, um, you know, still uh, press forward with God's work. We're building the kingdom. And, you know, that, he, I was, that he's leading that. So, but also I was like, okay, he's, he found it important enough to, while he's doing his ex exaltation, to go ahead and teach his son something that his son should know as a boy, that he, he took the time to teach him. So what's my point here? My point is that inspired me. I, I mean, I, I would have done the same thing with my kids, but I called him later and told him, you know, I really appreciated that. I like that, that he's spending time with his son and make, making sure um, I'm sorry, brothers, but for some reason, my video, uh, I was on earlier, but when I started speaking, for some reason, it, it won't, it won't come on now. It won't allow me to show the video. I don't know why. Um, I apologize about that. I'm pushing, clicking the button. It says it can't start video. So I don't know what happened, what changed, but, um, so, you know, I called him to tell him that, 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 you know, I was appreciative of that, that I, I liked that he did that. Um, and he told me, you know, that was great that I called him and told him that. But my point here is that, as Brother Baker said, our boys are watching us. Our men are watching us. Our brothers are watching us. Our co-workers are watching us. So always be, be con uh, conscious of what you're doing. Uh, as brothers uh, that, that we know we love Christ, we have to make sure that we're always uh, carrying ourselves in that light. We got to also always show that the decisions that we make or the words that come out of our mouth are those that are going to be true and good representation of the, the God we serve. So whatever it is you're doing, whatever capacity you're serving in, it doesn't matter. Somebody's watching you. Somebody's watching the decisions that you make. Somebody's watching your Facebook replies or your likes. Somebody, your employer is watching you all the time. Somebody is always watching you. So always be careful to do the right things. And sometimes the right thing might be socially not the right thing. Because we know we can get into some areas of uh, what what's become social and, and cultural norms or acceptances that we know aren't right by the word. And we're supposed to still stand on the word. We're not supposed to give in to it. We're not supposed to go along with it. Uh, just because the society says that's what that's okay, uh, that's it's okay for us to do that. But uh, we, when we know it's not, we shouldn't go along with it. So, brothers, my, I leave you with that word: always be careful, always be conscious, always know what you're doing and who you're representing, and represent that uh, foundation that we know is the is the word. Represent that that well because it influences somebody. It influences our kids our wives, how people look at our family, and more importantly than anything, it might influence a, a non-believer. And we know we're supposed to go build the kingdom and build the kingdom by bringing in new soldiers to the kingdom. And that might be your, your one action, your one word, your one like or dislike of a, of a post might be what turns somebody to Christ. And that's, you know, that's what, we, that's what we're here to do. Amen, brothers. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. Uh, thank you so much for those those encouraging those encouraging words, my my dear brother. And yeah, it is it is very important that um, that we listen to the listen to the Spirit and allow the Spirit to uh, speak to us. And uh, oftentimes we plan out uh, one thing, but the Spirit has a way of uh, prompting us to go in another 
an, another direction. But one thing for sure, as we study the scriptures and learn about all of the, the great, great men and women of God, when they listened to God and was obedient to God and, and changed their ways as God instructed them, they saw great breakthroughs. And, and we thank you so much, uh, my dear brother, uh, for those words of encouragement. Those are words of exaltation. And I trust that the, uh, the men of God have, have heard it and heard it loud and clear. God bless you. Right now we wanna do a, wanna do a drawing and uh, Pastor Pastor Gregory Williams, uh, you're here. You're you're here with us. Would you uh, share with us a little bit about our sponsor for this evening, Pastor? Can you uh, go right ahead, unmute your mic, and speak? Yes, sir. You. Thank thank you, Dr. Baker. First of all, I want to give honor to God and all these esteemed pastors and brothers and brethren in the Lord. We ask God speed to be on your life. It's an honor to be before you. Thank you, Dr. Baker, for this opportunity. As many of you may know and may not, I'm Pastor Greg Williams and um, I'm the Director of Community Relations for the Madelon Law Firm. And Madelon Law Firm is an injury attorney law firm that gives back to the community, works in conjunction with so many pastors throughout the state of Florida. And uh, there was a show that we did called It Matters some year, years ago and he put over a hundred pastors on TV. We were able to reach over 8 million people every morning, potentially. And it was just a great opportunity for us. Many of us small and church pastors had a platform that was beyond imagination. And so I'm honored to be here tonight to demonstrate to you once again, the Madelon Law Firm Injury Attorney, you can always use. All you have to dial is one eight seven seven. it matters because the attorney that you use in the time of a car accident, slip and fall, wrongful death, or any type of negligence would be Madelon. I can always give you his cell number and he always answers and he's there to assist you. And being that you're a friend of Pastor Baker, he'll take his service beyond your imagination. So at this time, without any further ado, I'm honored to present to somebody tonight, our first drawing. And it will be a $25 gift card to Olive Garden, Longhorn, uh, uh, Cheddar's, uh, Season 52, Bahama Breeze, or Yard House. And it's one of those variety cards, for folks. So why don't we get this party started, Baker? Dr. Baker, you, you have a name? Yeah, yeah, we have a name. We were uh, actually trying to uh, share the wheel so you will actually see it. But, uh, <laughs> okay. but I... I I got it right here. The you winner. The is, yeah, the winner is uh, Mr. Um, Pastor Eric Robinson. Pastor Robinson, can you uh, open up your mic? Pastor Eric Robinson. Hey, hey, brothers, how y'all doing? <laughs> hey, Doctor Robinson. Can you hear me? What's going on, brother? What happened? You just won. What did I win? A $25 gift card to Longhorn and Olive Garden and oh, man, that, that's, that, that That's a blessing. That's a, but 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 can can I can I um, can I forfeit it and, and, and bless somebody else, brother? Yeah, we'll, 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 yes. we'll, we'll spin the we'll we'll spin the wheel one more uh one more time here and uh okay. uh I appreciate it, but I like I like to bless another brother. Okay, bless you. Okay, it's it's spinning, and I'm I'm just waiting on the uh, waiting on the results. Uh, the winner is Luke Cox, brother Luke Cox. Brother Luke, you're with us. Yes, sir. All right, brother brother Luke, uh, Pastor William, there is our winner. You can uh, share right. something with him. Well, Luke, you 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 went a twenty five dollar gift card, as you already heard. I'm sure you went to Longhorn or a variety of other places. They're all part of the Darden Group. Um, I tell you what you can do. If you'd be so kind, I'll give you my number, and I will and and I will deliver the gift card to you. My number is three zero five. Just send me your information. My number is three zero five seven three three six six four five. That's three zero five seven three three six six four five. Once again, God bless you, and it's an honor. Looking forward to putting it in your hands. Thank you, Doctor Baker. Hey, thank you, thank you. Amen. I appreciate the blessing. 
Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We're going to move right along without without further ado. I it's my pleasure to introduce to you a very a very dear brother of mine. It seems like I've been knowing him for for many years. Uh, we just have that kindred spirit going on, and uh, he's been real very encouraging about uh, keeping uh, this men talk uh, going, especially during this pandemic time that that we all uh, need to be encouraged. And, and I must say, uh, uh, my, my dear brothers, I, I'm encouraged just being here uh, with you. You know, the scripture says, when two or three mm -hmm. uh, come together in the Lord's name, God promised that he's gonna be right here. And I think you can sense his presence this evening. So without further ado, it's my pleasure to uh, uh, present to you this evening. Uh, he's certainly no stranger. If you were with us last week, he was one of our speakers. Well, he's back again. He's back again. And, and in my time of, uh, of sharing with him, I, I sensed that God had another word of encouragement uh, for us from him. Uh, Deacon Ronald Mumford. Brother Mumford, you're on. Go right ahead. Thank you, Pastor Baker, and all you all you men of Christ. It's such an honor and a privilege to be here once again. I am um, certainly appreciative and uh, and humble just to be in the in the number one more time. Um, giving honor to God, I wanted to speak a little bit about brotherly unity. I think it's an important topic. Um, thank you, brother uh, Pastor Baker, for you know, setting up, the, setting the tone uh, for brotherly unity. So uh, as I begin, I want to first just, just look at unity. Uh, and vocabulary.com defines unity as being together with someone or something. Dictionary.com defines unity as the state of being united or combined into one. And lastly, the Macmillan Dictionary defines unity as a situation where people join together or agree. Now, Psalm 133, uh, um, verse 1, I'm going to give you three different versions. The New International Version says, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. The contemporary English version reads, it is wonderful when the people of God live together in peace. And lastly, the New Living Translation reads, how wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. And I believe that most of us would agree that it feels good to live in unity, peace, and harmony. Now, unity can also be described as a feeling, a feeling of cohesion or a feeling of a common mission like the, the Million Man March or the Black Lives Matter movement, or even this Men Talk Conference. When we are united, it's a beautiful thing. It is truly a blessing. Now, many of us brothers have experienced brotherly unity in some form or fashion, whether it be playing on a sports team, participating in school clubs, fraternities, church ministries, et cetera. And there's a reasonable expectation for all brothers to, to be treated with kindness, love, and respect. No one wants to be treated badly, and no one wants to be made to be feel less than. Dr. Maya Angelou said, people will forget what you did. People, people will forget what you said, but people will never forget how you made them feel. I believe that brotherly unity must encompass honesty, trust, respect, loyalty, et cetera. But unfortunately, brothers, what about when we're not unified? When we allow dissension creep in or we allow the devil to hinder, distract, or manipulate us from what our true purpose in Christ is? You see, that's what the world wants. The world wants to see us disenfranchised. They wanna see us at each other's throats. They wanna see, they wanna, they wanna divide and conquer. As brothers, we need to encourage each other, lift each other up. And 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11 says, therefore encourage one another 
and lift each other up just in fact as you were doing. Now, brothers, right here in my presentation, I'm going to have to shift and I'm going to have to use a four letter word. And if anyone is offended, I apologize right now. But that four letter word is pray. Now, by the look of some of your faces, I see that y'all are relieved that that's the word I'm using as opposed to something else. Brothers, we need to pray for each other. Not only do we need to encourage and lift each other up, we need to pray for each other constantly. But do we earnestly use the power of prayer? What does the power of prayer really mean to us? Is it meaningful or is it merely a habit or just, uh, just another routine in our daily lives? True prayer, brothers, is not merely, it's not merely a, a mental exercise or a vocal performance. It's deeper than that. It is a spiritual transaction with our creator of heaven and earth. Prayer is power and strength, a power and strength that influences God and is most celebratory, widespread, and marvelous in its gracious benefits to man. And brothers, prayer influences God. It's when we call on God for his divine intervention based on his word, his truth, and his promises. The Lord intervenes in response to our faith, our desire for him, and our need for him. The ability of God to do for man is the measure of the possibility of prayer. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 to 18, brothers, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God if in Christ Jesus for you. And I give you another familiar passage, which comes from James chapter 5, 16. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Some of us, some of, some of us uh, unfortunately are walking around broken and we need to be healed. And until we're healed, we can't have brotherly unity. You know, this, this year, 2020, has been a very challenging year for, for many of us. But 29th, uh, from 2021, there's, there's, there's a chance of hope. There's a feeling of hope. And I pray that as we move forward in this, this, this new year, that we forget about the old and we press on with the new. And with that, I'd like to open up, I'd like to offer up this prayer for brotherly unity. How we praise and thank you, Heavenly Father, for the diversity of gifts and graces within the body of Christ and the beautiful variety and variance of the characters, personalities, people's interests and activities that are represented throughout the whole church of God. May brotherly love and godly gentleness be the precious garment with which we all are clothed. And may we be of one mind and united in spirit and humble in heart, having the same love and working together with one intent, united in purpose. May we focus our thoughts on what we all hold dear, and may we be united in the essential doctrine of Christ, and yet demonstrate grace and liberty on those ideologies and dogmas that too often have caused splits in the body rather than encouraging brotherly love and gracious liberty. May we put aside our personal agendas and any exclusive churchmanship maximus that may give rise to ungodly, unnecessary, or schismatic arguments. And may our Lord Jesus Christ, who shed his blood on the cross and rose again to give us life, be the one to whom we all focus our gaze and whose name we pray. Amen, brothers. Remember, our past does not define us, and our present situation is not our final destination. Brothers, be safe, be blessed, and thank you very much for the time. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. 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 Bless you. Bless amen. You. Amen. Yeah, appreciate those great words. And and uh and people of God, we 
have to always be reminded that you know, one of the greatest things that we have available to us is our ability uh, to pray for one another. You know, I, I as a pastor, sometimes I, I, when my children say I got a headache or whatever, and I, I feel guilty because there are times that I don't stop and pray when that really need to be our first response to any kind of uh, 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 bad news or any kind of health issues is to is is to pray to pray. The Bible says the effect your fervent prayer of a righteous man. Guess what it does? It said it availeth much. It makes a great deal of difference. Our ability as men of God, when we take our rightful position, being the head of our households and put prayer as the centerpiece, it makes all of the difference in the world. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Deacon Mumford, for those 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 great words. We're gonna we're gonna do another gonna do another drawing at this time. Pastor Williams, can you come back on, please? Yes, sir. We are ready to rock and roll, Dr. Baker. Once again, we have another drawing another $25 gift card to Longhorn, Olive Garden, Cheddar's Yard House, Bahama Breeze, or Season 52, part of the Darden Group. Do you have the... The, the, your, the will has been spent <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it falls on Brother Herbie Joseph. Uh, Brother Joseph, you're with us. Brother Joseph, can you come on, please? Yes, yes I, I'm here. I'm okay. here. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor. Uh, congratulations, brother, brother, brother Joseph. It's an honor. I look forward to meeting you. If you don't mind, you can write down my number and text me okay. uh, your information. And sometime tomorrow, I meet with you uh, and give you the gift card along with other little trinkets. My number is three zero okay. five. My number is 305-733-6645. Thank you, Dr. Baker. I turn it back over to you. Amen, amen. Thank you very much. We uh, certainly want to uh, uh, be, be disciplined to the time the, the good Lord has afforded us. And we're asking everyone if you will mute your, mute, your, mute your mics as we uh, prepare to hear from a, a very dear friend of mine and a brother that uh, has uh, served with me uh, for a couple of couple of years, and it's my pleasure at this time, and and certainly you all were uh, that was with us last month. Heard a very powerful uh, testimony. If you haven't heard it before, uh, just remind me. I'll send you. I'll send you the link. It's you know nothing like hearing it uh, for yourself. And so this dear brother that I'm about to uh, bring before you, uh, he's a walking. He's a walking miracle, amen, he's a walking miracle. So without further ado, allow me to introduce you all uh, this evening, Pastor Eric Robinson. Brother Robinson, take it from there, please. Brother and brother, how y'all doing today? I hope everybody is blessed. I hope you can all, can everybody hear me? Can yes. I get a thumbs up from everybody, please? Can everybody get thank you? Can hear you, man of God. Amen, amen. I'd like to just say uh, thank you to each and every brother that's on this line. Um, I know that we could have been anywhere else, brother, but we chose to be on this line, and it's for a good reason, because it's good when men can come together and sharpen each other. Um, I apologize, uh, Pastor Baker. Um, I, I know what you're talking about when you say that God delivered me from 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 COVID. I was a, a, a I'm a COVID survivor, where uh, you know I was I had to get plasma. I was in a hospital for 13 days, but that's not what God put on my spirit today. But that's just one of the testimonies. Um, he put in my spirit uh, out of John uh, 15, commencing at verse 18. And what it says is that if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. And the reason why I chose that that particular um, topic is because yes, we are talking about um, brethren coming together and fellowshipping, and that's something that we 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 need in the body of Christ. Not only at my church at the Way Fellowship Church, but in every church, brothers. If we are 
called to be uh, men of God, it doesn't matter what church we go to, we all brothers in Christ and we must treat each other accordingly. That's why I say it's to dwell together in unity. Now, the reason why I came from that verse is because I have endured some hatred. And this hatred comes from people that I know. And what I, under, what I understand today is that the, and what it says that the world loves is the, the world loves his own. Now, when I was out there robbing and stealing and selling drugs and doing all the ungodly things, the world loved me. My nickname was Cowboy, and the world loved Cowboy because why? I was doing the things of the world. But as soon as I put down my guns and I began to serve the Lord and I put down the drugs and everything, the world turned its back on me. Now, I, I, I guess it was supposed to turn its back on me. I guess I'm, 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 I'm showing uh, uh, the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, kindness, and some kind of self-control because why? I don't act like the world no more. I'm not the same person I used to be. So the, the way I tie this in together is, is that when I do come to the church, I need to find some brothers that I can connect with that's going to show me some brotherly love because I've been beat up by the, by the world, man. My own friends and family have turned their back on me because I'm not the same person I used to be. So I'm looking for some love for some brethren in, in, from, from the church. And that's when I come to the church, at least I should find one or two brothers that I can uh, come to and, and, and share some of my pain and frustration with. That's what, we, that's what it's all about, how good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. Don't have to be from the Way Fellowship Church. Don't have to be from Antioch or whatever church that's represented in prayer line. But when I come in contact with a Christian brother, I, I, I should feel the love from that brother like uh, Brother Muffle was talking about. And that's what I'm asking for this evening, brother, that each and every one of us as men of God, that we learn how to... to to, to love each other, regardless of what church we come from. Let's begin to show each other brotherly love. That's the only way we're going to be able to change our, our, our young men out there. I had to take a pause from my um, from off, off the Zoom meeting uh, for about five or ten minutes because I have my son that's in prison in Mississippi, um, and I had to take that phone call and to, to, to continue to encourage him. Um, what we were talking about is, you know, he was telling me how his first, uh, uh, he, he only has one child, my granddaughter. He said, I could have been a, a better man by staying with the mother, but, you know, I, I didn't know how to treat her, you know, when, when I was out. And what I explained to him was that, how can you teach something if you've never been taught, son? I never taught you how to be a man. Because I had five kids, I got six kids from five different women. Never taught my son how to be a man. He had to share me with the streets and, and the alcohol. So what I'm saying is when I come to the church, I need some godly brothers, man, that can that can come aside, alongside of me. I'm talking about when I was young in my faith. I needed some brothers that can come alongside of me and show me how to be a man. And I thank God that I was able to land in a church called 93rd Street Community Missionary Baptist Church under the leadership of Pastor Carl Johnson, where I had the, the, the right brothers that came alongside of me to show me how to be a godly man. I thank God for that. Then I went to a church called the Found a New Life under the leadership of Pastor Wayne Lomax, and I, I got around some other godly men that showed me how to be a godly man. You got to understand something, man. I came from the streets. I didn't know about all that, that hug. I'd never been hugged by a man until I got to church. That other hugging out there in the street with your homeboy, that, that's that fake love. But I, I didn't experience real love until I got to the church and a man put his arms around me and said, I love you, brother. No gay stuff, man. That's the first time I've ever been hugged by a man. So all I'm saying today, brother, as I, as I close, if the world hates you, know that it's supposed to hate you. You're doing something right. So I want you to stay on this, on this, on this battlefield, man. And I want you to uh, uh, connect with good brothers that's in the church. 
and continue to grow in the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Pastor Robinson, uh, for those great words of how how important it is for each one of us to uh, begin to pour uh, some godly principles into our into our children, uh, so they can pass it on. In fact, those were those are one of the uh, things that uh, that the prophet of of, of old was uh, taught to proclaim and uh, prophesy over the people that they uh, that they pass on the laws of the Lord on to from generation to generation to generation and how important it how it is how important it is for each of us thank you so much uh, pastor robinson so with, with, without further ado we we're going to do a uh, uh, pastor waves is there another drawing before the grand prize pastor williams turn your mind. come back yeah we we have we have the grand we're ready for the grand prize so we'll we, we um we'll, so we'll hold off on that till uh to our final okay. after our after our final speaker i do want to uh I, I think i got about about 10 addresses so i have a special gift from my family uh to you my wife and i to you i need you to uh if you would go ahead and text me your complete address your name and your 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 address because if i don't have you in my phone then it's just going to be a, a address without a name give me your name and your address so we can get it in the mail get it in the mail to you the number is 305-335-9174 again it is 305-335-9174 okay so again, we we have we're we're down to our down to our final 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 speaker. Um, uh, this dear brother is uh, is is nationally known, and I, uh, I I'm certainly not going to share what I've uh, what I've already heard uh, some of his information because I'm not sure if he will bless us with it again. But I think I can say uh, with a, a great deal of accuracy. Uh, that you are in for a special treat, that you you are going to wish that you had invited, as I tried to get you to do, you're going to wish you had invited every male, every man that you know to listen and hear from my dear brother. So without without further ado, he's, he's certainly uh, uh, right here in, uh, in, in South Florida, and he's here with us here uh, this evening, and we, we are so grateful and thankful for him. So without further ado, allow me to introduce to you uh, our final guest speaker on this 2020, this last 2020 ter uh, uh, Men Talk of the Year, our guest speaker, Brother Anthony Henderson. Brother Henderson, go right ahead, please. Thank you so much, Dr. Baker, um, you know, for those kind words. You know, uh, your check is already in the mail. <laughs> you know, my, my mother, you know, Linda B, she always told me, she said, you know, son, you have to give it credit where, where credit is due. And I'd really and truly be remiss if I did not acknowledge you for having this platform, first and foremost, men talk, you know, and, and this is a this is a safe place. You know, some of you, this is your first time joining us, um, but I want everybody to know this is a safe place. And that's something that men really and truly need, a place where they can just be transparent and just be naked not literally, but figuratively, uh, a place where we can hold each other accountable, you know? And, and you know, I, I really, to be very candid with you, brothers, I wasn't sure what I was gonna talk about or what I was gonna share this evening, um, you know? And, and I think, uh, Dr. Baker, you kind of set me up. You, know, you had me going after those four distinguished gentlemen and, you know, and they're all truly a hard act to follow, but I'm, gonna do, I'm definitely gonna do my best and, and allow him to flow in me and through me. You know, Brother Robinson, when he was speaking, you know, he, you know, he, a couple of things came to mind when he was talking about uh, how, how his son didn't know what to do, you know, because he wasn't taught, he wasn't necessarily trained. And, and you know, one of the things I found about people is, you know, pe a person can't do what they don't know. You know, individuals can't use what they don't have. You know, and when you think about life, the more tools we have, the better equipped we are. D -d -d Does that make sense, brothers? The more tools we have, the better equipped that we are. Now, if you have only a hammer in your toolbox, 
you're going to think the best way to handle every situation is to bang it, right? And sometimes you do need to bang it. But every now and then, you just need just a little screwdriver. Every now and then, you need just a little pliers. You know, certain things, you just need a little tweaking. But again, the more tools you got, the better equipped you are. And so my hope for you that this, this evening is I just give you just a couple tools to be able to add to your toolbox <laughs> to be able to get, get through this thing called life, uh, you know, a little bit better and a little bit more efficiently. Um, so what I'm going to talk to you all about is um, just four words. Can't keep running away. OK, you just can't keep running away. You know, so oftentimes in life, we run away from things. We run away from things because they make us uncomfortable. We run away from things because it's inconvenient. We run away from things because we just don't want to deal with it. But the reality, as men of God, especially, we just can't keep running away. You know, you run from things, like I said, that makes you uncomfortable at times. But one of the things I tell my children, I tell my athletes, I train, I tell my clients, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. All right, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Because if you're able to do that, it doesn't matter what life throws at you. Life can throw everything at you, including the kitchen sink. It doesn't matter. You're going to be all right, all right. Okay, you're going to be straight Gucci. You're going to be good because you're comfortable being uncomfortable. And what's so amazing is that oftentimes when we, when we run, you know, we think that, it, it, that it's going to make whatever we're running away from disappear. It's like, poof. Do you believe in magic? But that doesn't happen. The problem is still there. As a matter of fact, you may run from the problem and it may give you a temporary reprieve, a temporary you know, break, if you will. But at the end of the day, that problem's still there. And it's, it's looking at you. It's like, oh, you're running, right? Oh, oh that's what we're doing? You're running from me. All right, well, I'm gonna be right here tomorrow, same place, and I'm gonna be waiting on you. As a matter of fact, your problem's like, yoo-hoo! Hey, remember me? Yeah, remember me, it, it, it's me, I'm here, I ain't going nowhere. So you might as well just deal with me. So we have to deal with our problems and we have to ultimately stop running away from our problems. If we, if we would never respect, you would never respect yourself. Let me say that, if you keep running and others won't respect you either. All right, you know, they may be like, Johnny, oh, Johnny, he's such a fine young man, love the Lord. But man, when things get a little rough around there, oh, he's out of there. He's running. He's trying to avoid it. Oh, Sally. Oh, man, she's a, adorable. I love her. Just a sweet spirit. But man, when the going gets tough, she's running. She's out of there. And, you know, so you don't want that. You would never finish anything if you, if you keep running. But this is the most important thing that you got to understand about if you keep running. You will never mature in the things of God if you keep running. You know, I'm reminded of a scripture that says, you know, when I was a child, I, I thought like a child, I, I spoke like a child, I, I kind of did childish things, right? I'm sure most of us are familiar with that scripture, but, but now that I'm old, I'm, I'm kind of done with those childish things. That's, that's a thing of the past. I'm, I, I don't do that stuff anymore. And, and, you know, for some of you, you know, you watch me this evening, if, if I were to get a little closer to you and smell your breath, your breath smells straight like Similac, baby, baby's milk, <laughs> because you keep running away. You keep avoiding situations. You know, you haven't faced things in your life. And you, you know, you keep running and you're not facing that thing. You might be looking, well, well, brother Anthony, you know, you don't know my situation. It's 2020, it's COVID. It's a global pandemic. I had to run. Don't be judging me. Shoot, it's tough out here. And yes, I no, 2020 has been catastrophic for some, and it's been troubling for us all. But I'm reminded of something that Desmond Tutu once said. Desmond Tutu said, hope, okay, and you got to have hope, guys. Hope is the ability to see that there is light despite all of the darkness, all right? You have to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. Well, brother, you might be running because the situation made you cry. You might be running because it's inconvenient. You might be running because of the the discomfort, but I want you to understand, gentlemen, is that that place is a place of growth for you, okay? Understand that it rains on both the just as well as the unjust. It takes both sunshine as well as rain for a plant to grow, for a tree to grow, for flowers to grow. 
And we're no different than the plants in that regard. We need some sunshine. We need good stuff, right? Everybody like to be blessed, but we need some bad stuff. We need some rain. We need some hail. We need some thunder, some lightning to strengthen us, to gird us up with truth. You know, I'm going to kind of end right now and start my close, if I should say, with, with, with two reasons that you can't, that you got to stop running away. Can't keep running away, I should say. The first one is this. There's no provision in the run. There's no provision in the run. The provision is in the fight. The provision is standing up to whatever it is, right? Because there's no provision in the run. You know, I remind the story of a little shepherd boy by the name of David and when he faced Goliath. Goliath was a monster of a foe, you know, and, and, and David again was a little shepherd boy. But I like how David handled the situation. You know, he was like, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He talked about the man's middle part. He talked about the Johnson. Now, y'all know, when you talk about a man's middle part, them fighting words, you know? So he was like, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that's trying my God? So he knew he had to handle it. But again, David hadn't, you know, came up against anything or any person like Goliath. Goliath, he was tried and true, he's, you know, mighty warrior. And, but, but one thing that God did for David, he's reminded David, he said, you know, David, do you remember when you killed that lion and that bear with your, with your bare hands, they was like, yeah, yeah. Guy was like, I was with you there, wasn't I? He's like, yeah, you were with me. He said, okay, well, I'm gonna be with you when, you when you face Goliath. And so one of the things that David did before he faced Goliath, he put on the full armor of God. Now listen to me closely, gentlemen. The full armor of God consists of a helmet of salvation, um, a breastplate of righteousness, everything's right in the front, right? Shield of faith, kind of protect you if it's anything that's coming against you. A belt of truth, again, which is right in the front. Your feet shod with the preparation and readiness of gospel of peace. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, this is point number two. And this is one of the main points I want you to get to this evening. And why you can't keep running away. And that is because there's no protection for your backside, man. Ain't nothing covering up your bunkie. And what that means is you shouldn't be turning your back. You should not be running away. You got to face that thing. Well, Brother Anthony, I'm, I'm, I was just, 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 just a little scared, a little, 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 little fearful. Well, I want to remind you of something tonight. You're not blessed with the spirit of fear. You're not. That's what the word of God says. You're not blessed with the spirit of fear. You're blessed with the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. But you got to step out of the fear zone and step into the faith zone. And beloved, when you do that, I'm telling you, you, you know, the sky's the limit. You'll be able to do any and everything. Okay, but you got to face whatever it is. You just can't keep running away. So what's fear? You know, one of the acronyms of fear is false evidence of appearing real. If something's false, that means it's, it's not true, right? It's not true. It's not the real thing. It's not the real thing. It's just an imposter. All right. But I want to leave you with two acronyms for the word fear. And I'm going to let you choose which one you're going to apply to your life. Because although I've shared with you the reason that you can't keep running away, you know, first one is there's no provision in, in, you know, in the run. And secondly, there's nothing protecting your backside. All right. But again, you're, God has created us all to be free, be free more agents and we have the ability to choose. Right. So the first acronym for fear is this. You can forget everything and run. I've been speaking to you about maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. I'm not sure. Okay. But you can forget everything and run. You can choose to do that. But I would choose this one if I were you. You can face everything and rise. You can face everything and rise. And you, you can rise on, you know, bound up on eagle's wings, and wing, eagle's wings and soar. But it's up to you, gentlemen. All right. And as I said, you just can't keep running away. You just can't keep running away. And that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to share with y'all this evening. Like I said, it was a, a rhema word, a now word that I felt God wanted me to share with you guys. And, um, you know, just stay, stay strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I didn't want to be long. I didn't want to, uh, you know, give y'all like a keynote address, but I just want to give you some inspirational words. And I hope they, that they, that you were fed this evening, that you're encouraged and, uh, Excellent job to the four gentlemen that went before me. Like I said, y'all made it tough on a brother. 
<laughs> but uh, that's it, man. Blessings to you guys. Amen. 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 Praise amen. the Lord. Praise God uh, for you, brother Anthony. Face everything and rise. rise. I think we need to all say that. Okay. <laughs> face everything. everything. And rise. and rise. What a what a what a closing. What a what a closing for us uh, as we uh, prepare uh, to go into an, another week. Face everything and rise, men of God. Amen. We thank God. We thank God so much for that. We we want to get a couple of uh, uh, get a couple of testimonies, a couple of testimonies in, and then uh, we uh, we will. Uh, uh, do the do the drawing for the for the grand for the grand prize, and then we'll uh, we'll prepare for a closing a closing closing benediction and uh, and uh, prepare ourselves as we uh, we go into uh, these these uh, next few days in this in this Christmas season of just celebrating and worshiping our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, so we gonna get a uh, get a few more. Uh, just uh, uh, get, can we get a couple of testimonies? Maybe the Lord has done something special for you during this hour, or maybe God has done something special for you this past week, this past year, that you find it noteworthy. Because you know when God gives us a testimony, remember it's not for you; it's for us. We need to we need to hear what God has done for you so we can be encouraged you know it's been said no no tests no testimony but maybe we got a couple of testimonies uh from uh, a couple of you great men that you'd like to share we just asking it limited to a couple of minutes would you go just quickly open up your mic quickly we want to obviously hear from some some of you that we have not heard from this evening so go right ahead go right ahead i I mean, some very, very familiar names out there, and I certainly don't want to call you out, but you know, you know who you are. You know, if God done something great for you, God done something supernatural, it's incumbent upon you, it is required of you to share it with the people of God. Go right ahead. Bless the Lord. I um my name is um Minister James Williams and um I just, I just truly bless the Lord, you know, because um, uh, for 27 years of my life, you know, I walked to and fro in the earth and I didn't know which way to turn, neither to the left, neither to my right. In and out of revolving doors of the prison life, you know, 10 and uh, 25 to 27 years of my life spent in just one small cell and Oh, but when I surrendered everything to Jesus Christ, and it's going on five years now, you know, I was released in uh, on February 11th, 2016, and um, I ain't looked back, ain't nothing back there no more. I'm looking towards uh, the help of the highness in Christ Jesus, where all my help is coming from, you know, and um, truly I bless the Lord, um, a beautiful wife, and um nice home and and um just some uh, living to to the glory of god today and i i just thank him for my freedom and my new mindset you know old things have passed away and all things are becoming new still in my life today i'm still growing uh, uh in christ i'm learning new and i just want to overflow the kingdom with lost souls uh, for Jesus Christ. And that's just my testimony today. I'm, you know, it was a time I weighed uh, 138 pounds. Now I'm uh, 195, almost 200. So I, I bless the Lord. I, I, I truly bless the Lord. I'm, I'm grateful, you know, for my life today in Christ. You know, it's just here in Christ. You know, and I, there's not a better joy that I, uh, I, I promise him I, I, I stand on any high mountain. I go wherever you need me to go and say whatever you need me to say. For Jesus, Lord, I, I just call me and I'll go. Amen. 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 Bless you, Amen. my brother. I appreciate yes. that. Appreciate that. Next, go right ahead, please. Good afternoon. Most of you guys probably don't know me. Uh, I was asked to come on by Minister Robinson 
I am gospel recording artist Norris Williams. I chimed in a little late with him. However, he talked about testimonies and being able to give one about this year. Well, we came into this year with um, COVID. And while I wasn't so busy, for some reason, I became incredibly busy. <laughs> so it went from being an average year in an average career to God propelling me to places far beyond what I've ever imagined. Um, I was able to release my first worldwide single in May. Um, and in the midst of releasing that worldwide single, someone heard me in England and decided to uh, call me after hearing my song and then watching my music video. He in turn, by the way, he is Jewish, contacted me and wanted me to do a Christmas song with me, which is very unusual because you know that Jewish people don't celebrate Christmas. We in turn uh, produced a song. We produced a music video, which currently has a nomination. Uh, the song which he heard has three nominations. Uh, I in turn wrote a book throughout this year that's coming out next year. And from the music video, there was a company that we hired uh, to market us. And in turn, that company was connected to a movie company. They enjoyed the video so much that they put the music into that movie. They in turn came back weeks later and had me shoot scenes for the movie. So when we talk about exceedingly and abundantly, that scripture, which is my favorite, Ephesians 3.20, says to hold do exceedingly and abundantly about all you can ask or think. This year, I probably did about 15 television interviews, about 20 radio interviews. I'm on about 300 radio stations across the world. And I don't think there's a better way to explain exceedingly and abundantly better than that. I do Christian music. And so for that reason, I'm grateful that I'm able to minister to millions of people around the world now. Now, the interesting thing about this is that 30 years ago, I was an eight-year crack addict. And I had nothing and was going nowhere. But it was me driving down the street Surfing the radio station, I come across a Christian song, most of you probably know, Standing in the Need of Prayer. From that Christian song, it changed my life. And today, what am I doing? Ministering to other people around the world. And I think that's an awesome thing. I, just, I needed to share that with you. I was supposed to come on and sing, but I think testimonies are even more important. My music ministry opens the door for what these testimonies do. They allow people around the world, uh, whether it's television or radio, to know that God is doing really, really great things. The interesting thing is he doesn't just do it for me, he does it for anybody who chooses to accept him. Again, I'm gospel recording artist Norris Williams. Have a blessed evening, everyone. Amen, my brother. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for blessing us. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for sharing uh, that word of testimony. We'll get one Dr. more. Baker. We'll get one Dr. more. Baker. Go right ahead, please. You'd be so kind. Um, you know, I didn't know Brother Williams was actually going to be on the call. Um, I had the privilege of meeting this young man uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, I reached out to him, um, uh, an organization that we're both a part of, the International Career and Business Alliance. And I reached out to him and, you know, we've spoken on a few occasions and uh, I actually just put the link to his video in the chat there. Um, it definitely will bless you brothers. Um, and I would suggest you, um, actually I'm gonna see if I can find a link to that you can go purchase it as well, but it's definitely gonna bless you. Very talented brother. Um, and you know, his story is even more compelling than he just shared with you. It was just a brief summation. 
Um, but before I hand it back over to you, brother, Dr. Baker, I just want to say something because the spirit just prompted me on something. I didn't share with you, you know, what happens when you, when you are fearful, you know, when you are afraid because fear, you know, as I say, we're not blessed with it, but it is a, a, a real emotion. You know, it's, it's definitely a real feeling. You know, if you were David, you know, I'm probably sure David got a little nervous. He was a little, little anxious. He probably had the bubble guts before he had to go up against Goliath. He probably had to go boo-boo or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But the reality is you just got to do it afraid. You do it afraid. You can't keep running away. You know what I'm saying? Because again, there's no, there's, there's no provision in the run, okay? And two, a none protecting your backside. So I just wanted to share that with you, but I, you know, excellent platform. And, and again, thank you all for the opportunity. Amen. 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 Uh, we thank you. Uh, did, did we have one, did we have one more uh, before we wrap up? We, we're, you know, we're down to our last uh, uh, final minutes. Uh, did not want to uh, leave someone out that wanted to uh, share a testimony. Uh, if, uh, if that's you, you go right ahead. Go right ahead. Amen. Okay, sound like sound like all minds are all, all minds are clear. Again, uh, I uh, promised that I would uh, bless every single one of you with a gift from my wife and I. Uh, if you would uh, send me your complete address, that's 305-335-9174. 305-335-9174. Uh, allow me to be a blessing. Allow us to be a blessing uh, to each of you. If you would, please allow us to do that. I got maybe half of you on here. Uh, would love to have all of, would like, love to bless all of you on here. Let me plant a seed. Let me be a blessing uh, to each one of you. So Send it again to 305-335-9174. Uh, so at this time, I, I do want to acknowledge uh, several uh, uh, brothers had to had to get off the line, uh, but those that are still with us, we're getting ready to uh, call the uh, the grand prize. We think uh, we're thankful and grateful for the Madeline uh, Law Group that uh, have uh, agreed to step in and bless us with. Uh, some uh, some gifts uh, this evening, and we we're thank thankful for the, the gift cards and this uh, flat screen uh, 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 colored uh, television, and uh, we thank God for that. Again, I just want to acknowledge those that are still on with us, uh, 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 Brother Gregory Williams, uh, someone calling from uh, last four digits six nine four four. God bless you. Uh, Armen, Armani, Armani, uh, uh, Brother uh, Anthony Henderson, uh, Brother Bobby Baker, uh, Brother Daryl uh, Stelton, uh, uh, Brother Daryl Baker, uh, Brother Dr. Paul Moore, uh, Brother Eric Robinson, uh, someone with a Galaxy 59, God bless you, uh, Herbie Joseph, uh, Brother James Dotson, God bless you, Brother Dobson, uh, Brother James, uh, Brother uh, Kelvin Lewis, God bless you, Kelvin. Uh, someone under uh, uh, Brother uh, LG, LG Style, our dear brother we just heard from, uh, Lou Cox, uh, Pete, uh, PJ, uh, Princeton Dozira. Uh, Brother Ronald Mumford, uh, Brother Samuel Tate, uh, uh, Brother Tyrell TJ, uh, Brother Will e Eaton, William Baker Jr., and last but not the least, uh, radio personality, Dr. Maurice Rutherford. Rutherford. Again, again, thank you all so much for. Uh, tuning in uh, for uh, allowing us to uh, to share together. And uh, thank you for giving us and sharing with us these last uh, last two hours of your of your day. Uh, I pray God's continuous blessings on each of you as you uh, celebrate uh, this reason for this season and make preparation, Lord willing, to enter into a new 
year and into into a, a new year. So again, thank you all. Thank thank you all very 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 much. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to have uh, if uh, brother uh, brother Mumford if he'd be so kind enough after we finish this uh, to give us our closing give us our closing benediction. Uh, Brother Mumford, you can prepare yourself for that. Again, without further ado, again, I don't want to, if, if there's a special uh, prayer request or something like that, if you can just uh, unmute your mic and, and let it be made known so we can include you in our final closing prayer. Any special needs out there, we don't want to wrap up uh, this time together without calling forth uh, the Lord on your behalf. Anyone speak up real quickly, please. Speak it real quickly, please. Amen. Amen. This is a sacred moment. It's a sacred hour. Uh, some needs can be met. It's not a prayer request. Go not ahead. a prayer request, Dr. Baker. But and I know we're approaching two hours, and we, you know, that may be the time cut off. But if at all possible, I, I feel strongly that we will really be blessed if uh, Brother uh, Williams was allowed to sing that, sing one song, if he's able to, or if the time allows it. But again. Yeah. Amen. I don't know. Well, brother, brother, brother Williams, are you still with us? Uh, if 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 you are you're able to, we would uh, like to uh, go ahead and uh, uh, plug you in right now if you're 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 able to, and then we'll have that uh, final drawing and that closing closing benediction. Brother Williams, you still with us? I had a precious prayer prayer request as well. Okay. My name is William Baker Jr. Yes. I'm the brother. Pastor Darrell Baker. Yes. And I uh, recently had hernia surgery. Hernia surgery. And I'm just asking you guys, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. I'm up here in Fairfax, West Virginia. William Baker Jr. So uh, prayer request. Uh, Dar yes. yes. It's my older brother. Okay. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, prayer request for, uh, uh, you know, God's continued hey, yep. healing on your life. Amen. Yes. Amen. We, we'll have Brother Mumford uh, to uh, remember that. Anyone else? Anyone else while we are, uh, we're, we're, we're getting uh, the prayer list together? Anyone else? I'd just like to, Pastor Baker is, uh, this is a time of need for those that are less fortunate. Uh, this week, those that are uh, that are lonely, yet, that are out there, and uh, we need to lift them up in prayer. You know, we, we are most of us uh, have been blessed and fortunate, but let's lift up the ones that are really suffering and downtrodden out there. Amen. 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 I I, I want to add. I just got a uh, text in for one of the uh, members in our fellowship uh, uh, that's dealing with uh, uh, sickle cell problems. And uh, the report is uh, the dear sister is in bad shape, uh, just need the uh, supernatural, supernatural move of God on her life. Her name is Patricia, Pat Patricia. If we can uh, remember Patricia in uh, Patricia in prayer, and also would like uh, for us to uh, uh, hold each other up in this, this final uh, uh, corporate prayer that we would hold each other up. We say a prayer over this fellowship that God would keep us all faithful, that God would keep us all focused on him. Amen. Amen. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? Very good. Very good. Uh, brother, brother Williams, are you ready? Yes, sir, Pastor. Thank you so much yeah. once no, again. No, no, Pastor is the uh, the musician. The musician. Okay. The musician. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. The the musician. You still with us? Yeah, I got you. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah, go right ahead. So, being that this is Christmas season, we're gonna take you out with that Christmas song that uh, I produced entitled Christmas is a Time for Everyone. I feel the magic in 
Christmas. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, my dear brother, for blessing us, man. And, and thank you so much, uh, Brother Henderson, for encouraging us to uh, get a get a, a sample, a taste of the anointing that God has placed on our dear brother's life. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Rutherford, you're, uh, you're with us this evening, Dr. Rutherford. No, you have. Yes. To... Yeah, go right ahead, Dr. Yes. Rutherford. Yes, I just want to take the time out to welcome everyone. Indeed, it's, it's a great movement. It came in my spirit that 2021 is going to be the year for this kind of come together. Uh, so Dr. Baker, I just want to raise my hat off for you for the effort that you're putting into this. Uh, I see 2021 going to be the year for this. And I'm encouraging everyone to make sure we take the time out to be a part. Also, have a, your own communication with the Lord. Have your own, um, speak to the Lord daily if you can. Your way, nobody, nobody else way, but your way. Once you have that commu communication with the Lord, you will be in good shape. And Dr. Baker, your job for us will be much easier mm -hmm. to keep us together uh, working for the Lord. Amen, Dr. Rutherford. Thank you so much. For those of you that don't know Dr. Rutherford, he's a radio personality of WAVS 1170, uh, the Believer Strengthening uh, Network. And uh, he and I work very close at uh, working and bringing churches together 
uh, Believer Strengthening Network is uh, uh, was organized to bring the body of Christ together that we no longer function as one unit, one silo, but we function uh, to bring the church together in, in, uh, in unity, which is what uh, this whole initiative is all about. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dr. Maurice Rutherford. Uh, uh, Pastor Gregory Williams, tell us a little bit about the Madeline Law Group and then we'll prepare for our, uh, we'll prepare for our grand prize. Go right ahead, please. Absolutely, thank you, Pastor. I just wanna to say tonight has been a spiritual enjoyment. Our cups truly have been running over. We want to say, you know, uh, happy holiday to all of you great brethren. It's an honor to meet you virtually. And uh, we pray God speak continuously on your life. Everything has been enjoyable. We thank you, Dr. Baker, for God allowing you to be the visionary, to put this together, to allow us to, to assemble ourselves in such a fashion to, and God knows we need to be encouraged in times like this. So it's been absolutely uh, amazing. I uh, just want to say a few words and be very brief. The Madelon Law Firm, as I said, is an injury attorney. You might've seen this on the brochures or if you've seen the logo, but of course he's one of the major law firms down here in South Florida, but he's not so big where he can't be cut, touched or, or reached by any common individual. Uh, you can reach him on his cell phone. You can reach him through Dr. Baker. That, also, Dr. Rutherford, myself, many of you have been already been uh, uh, working along with the Madelon Law Firm. He's assisted you with your case. Again, he's an injury attorney, uh, car accident, slips and fall, wrongful death, uh, nursing home abuse, negligence, any of those type of things. Also, let me share something else with you before we, we close out and do the do the, the final drawing for the flat screen smart TV that we have. And you can see it right behind me here. Um, if you know anyone that has been diagnosed with cancer yourself or someone that's been diagnosed with cancer and if they've taken Xantex or Ranadine uh, and they have cancer, please join the class action lawsuit. Uh, you will have a six figure lawsuit before you, Madeline can help you and accommodate you with that to, um, to compensate you quite well. And so if you know anybody that has, that has cancer and they've taken Ranadine or they've taken Xantex, uh, again, it's a class action lawsuit. If you need to reach the Madelon Law Firm, you can dial 1-877-IT-MATTERS or 954-923-0072. Madelon Law Firm. And I always say, don't get mad, call Madelon. All right, Pastor Baker, thank you so much. Um, we're ready. We're okay. ready to give away a great TV. Okay, we, we, uh, the will has been spent. I was real excited to uh, launch this new technology, but it's not being real gentle. That was sort of why we was a little bit late uh, starting, just trying to get it that weaved in, uh, but we've already we've we've spent the wheel, and the uh, and the wheel has fallen on Brother Princeton Do D, D Rosier. There is it. Am I pronouncing that right, Brother Princeton? Brother hey, Princeton. How you doing? Uh, it's D Rosier. Great, great, great. You're you able to you able to show your video? Amen. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Yeah, Is go it, ahead. Yeah, go ahead, my brother. Just just share with the share with the man a little bit. Uh, I was uh, invited by Mr. TJ. Appreciate yeah, inviting me. Uh, had a great time listening on um just hearing you guys speak. Um, my name is Princeton DeRozier. I'm from Orlando. Uh, I play at the, I, I play the organ and keyboard at the um, Kingdom Church over in Colonial. In yeah. Pine um, current student at UCF as a radio television major and a minor in film. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Pastor, Pastor Williams, uh, yes, sir. share with uh, Brother uh, Princeton, please. Yes, uh, in terms of how we can get the television. Um, Brother Princeton, give me your, if you don't mind, if you mm -hmm. could text me your tele, my, I text you, my tele, I'll give you my telephone number, you text me your information. 
All right, I'm ready. Yeah, my number is 305. 305? 735-6645. 303-6645. Yes, sir. 6645-305-733-6645. You're in the Orlando area, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And and uh, I'll get with Dr. Baker, and we will get this television to you. All righty. Thank you. All right. God bless Hello. you. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt um, Brother Greg Williams. I'm also in Orlando. I've been invited by uh, TJ Tyrell. And with the gift card, uh, I won't be able to meet you. And okay. I'm not down south. So. Oh, we got to. As long as you got King Jesus and Dr. Baker, we get this thing too. You ain't got to worry about it. Oh, that ain't no problem then, brother. <laughs> We're going to make it do what it do. God bless you, man. You ain't got to worry. We yeah. make it happen. Beautiful, uh, 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 Pastor William, uh, give uh, uh, attorney, uh, our dear, dear attorney, uh, uh, our appreciation for uh, stepping in and uh, sponsoring and uh, adding another flavor uh, to our gathering uh, here this evening. Again, special thanks to the Madeline Law Group and special thanks to all of you dear men. I just wanna encourage you that each one of you are special in God's, and God has a special plan and a purpose for each one of our lives. And, uh, and for that, we need to just shout and give honor and glory unto our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Without further ado, we're going to uh, go straight into our closing benediction again. If you're on the line and I have a gift for you and I want you to send me your complete address, 305-335 nine one seven four this time i want to turn everything out our closing benediction our final words will be coming directly from our dear brother deacon ronald mumford brother mumford uh you can close us out thank you thank you brother pastor if all minds and hearts are clear let's go to the to the throne of grace dear heavenly father host of hosts king of kings we come to you just saying thank you. Thank you. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for everything that you've done in our lives. We thank you for what you're doing. And we thank you and give you praise for what you're going to do. Dear Heavenly Father, it's been a blessing tonight to, to be amongst all these brothers to get our spiritual food just today. And we just want to give you all the praise and all the honor. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask a special blessing and a special prayer for Brother William Baker. Keep him in the palm of your hand, dear Heavenly Father. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come, come to him as he deals with his situation. You know his body better than any doctor knows his body. We ask that you also uplift Miss Patricia. I don't know her last name, but you do. You know her situation. We ask that you shed the blood of Jesus on her, dear Heavenly Father. Keep her. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come, come to her. I ask that you would keep a hedge of protection around all the men and the families that are represented here tonight. And a hedge of protection around all the brothers that wanted to get on, but for whatever reason, they could not get on. You know their needs and you know their wants. We just want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for this special time. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, and all those that love the Lord said, amen. 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 Merry amen. Christmas you, and uh, Happy New Year to each of you. We look forward to uh, getting back together again next year. Uh, God, bless, God bless you all and have a pleasant evening. God bless you. Amen.